One of the coolest things Nintendo has ever done was host the Nintendo World Championships. Nintendo fans and players get together to battle that out and see who's the best at their favorite games. I mean, what could be better than that? Well, that seems to be what Nintendo was thinking when they released this, the Nintendo World Championships NES Edition game for the Nintendo Switch. Now this late addition to the Nintendo Switch's already amazing library is really good, and I'm going to show you why. But before we get started, if you enjoy this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And now, let's take a look at the Nintendo World Championships NES Edition. So I have here the deluxe edition of the game. Now this was 60 US dollars, and I believe this was actually the only way to get a physical copy of the game. However, if you're not looking to spend so much money on something like this, I believe you can actually get the, the digital version of the game off of the Switch eShop for only 30 US dollars. All right, so before we take a look at what's inside, I just want to point out that I really like that all of the characters and anything that's gold on the box art itself is actually glossy, which I didn't, you know, you couldn't tell with all the, the uh, promotional pictures, so I thought that was a really nice touch. All right, so inside this deluxe edition, you actually get some really cool stuff. Now, when you first open it up, probably one of the first things you're going to notice is a glint of gold, and that is from this. It is a replica NES cartridge for the Nintendo World Championships. Now, this isn't actually what the label for the World Championships cartridge actually looked like. This is just to match the box art for this, but still, it's nice. Now, it's worth noting that this is not a real NES game. It does not work, and actually, like, there's not even a... There's not even a slot for the circuit board in there. This is not an actual NES game. This is just for display. And even at that, it, it's really cool. I like it. I like that it comes with the sleeve. Although, I, I, don't, I don't actually use the sleeve. It came with this, which is a really nice, really hefty display stand that you can stick it on there. And then you can just sit it on your shelf and display it. And this display stand is really nice because it's actually pretty hefty. So you're not likely to knock it over. So moving on, also inside the box are the game, and then there are these two boxes. The larger of these two boxes is a pin set. Now these are really nice. I, I love these designs, especially the World Championship logo one there. It With the classic World Nintendo World Championships actual logo. It's really cool. I love it. Also, side note, I guess I'm kind of becoming a pin collector now, because I got these, I have the Mario 35 pins, and I have the pins that came with the Tears of the Kingdom Collector's Edition. And then the other box has some really, really nice quality art cards in them that on one side have the box arts for the different games that are included in this set. And they're, they're, they're actually printed on really nice card stock and nice glossy prints. But then on the backs of all the cards, you got uh, artwork of the characters that you play as in the games. Although actually one of the, I think the Donkey Kong one has a picture of Donkey Kong and you don't actually play as him in Donkey Kong, obviously. So now we come to one of my first slight complaints about this, and this is only specific to the Deluxe Edition, in that I really wish that the art cards were not double-sided. I wish that if they were to include the character art on the back, I wish it would rather be uh, separate cards so that you can actually display both sides. Because like as it is, if you want to display these properly, you have to get two sets of these and you know put them side by side. Uh, so that's one of my only slight complaints about the pre- actually that's really my only complaint about the presentation of this set is just that I wish we had- I wish we had art cards for both- like separate cards for both sides. Now if that's the only complaint I have about the presentation, you know it's well done. And so that's something that I've actually taken note of with Nintendo is that they seem to take pride in their collector's editions. Now I have- I think that this is my third actual like collector's edition video game thing I bought. So the first was the Lego Star Wars Deluxe Edition for the Switch specifically. Um, and then there was the Tears of the Kingdom Collector's Edition and now this. And Nintendo seems to do it right. This, the goodies inside are just fantastic. Everything is such high quality, it's great. The Tears of the Kingdom Collector's Edition was just fantastic. I mean, there, there's just so much in it and everything was just, it's so cool. And then, but then you come to like the Lego Star Wars one that isn't, you know, it wasn't put out by Nintendo. And the only thing you get inside that makes it a deluxe edition is you get a minifigure of Luke Skywalker. That's it. So yeah, I've, I've, I've learned that Nintendo knows how to do deluxe editions right. All right, well, onto the actual gameplay. Nintendo World Championships consists of a bunch of mini speedrun challenges from 13 different NES games. And for the most part, there's a pretty good selection of games here. 
you have the obvious ones like Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2, Super Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario Brothers Lost Levels, The Legend of Zelda, Zelda 2, Metroid, Kirby's Adventure, and Donkey Kong. And these, in my opinion, were the obvious choices that absolutely needed to be in this game. And then there were a handful that, while I understand why they're here, I personally don't really like them. And those are Kid Icarus, Excite Bike, Balloon Fight, and Ice Climbers. Specifically Kid Icarus, I tried to play that game a bunch of times on my NES Classic Edition, and I really just don't like it. As far as I can tell, the games play basically exactly like the originals. The only problem is that means that Zelda 1 has the stupid janky controls that barely work, and combine that with the iffy D-pad on the Switch Pro Controller, and I unfortunately have a really hard time with any Zelda 1 challenges. Which sucks, because I love The Legend of Zelda. The user interface is very simple. Nothing flashy, with pretty generic sound and competition music. It's not bad considering what this game is, but nothing about this menu system feels NES-like. It would be cool if there were 8-bit graphics or maybe NES music, but no, it's just very generic. And that's probably my biggest complaint about this whole game. The theming and the menus are just too generic and boring. Now, I know the digital version is just a $30 game, but come on Nintendo, you can do better than this. There are three different game modes, speedrun mode, survival mode, and world championships mode. In all three modes, you play the same mini speedrun challenges, and most of them take less than a minute, but some can actually take a few minutes, like this one where you have to beat World 1 in Super Mario Bros. 3. In speedrun mode, you compete against yourself trying to get the fastest times in all of the game's challenges. You earn coins from completing these challenges, and you use them to unlock more. And some of the goals are actually really fun to try and get the fastest times in. Like, I really love this one where you have to open the key door in Super Mario Bros. 2 as fast as possible. You can choose to have a ghost of your best time displayed next to your gameplay screen, or you can turn that off. And I prefer to leave it off as I'd rather just be centered on the screen. Next up, survival mode. Now, this is where the game can actually become kind of frustrating. You compete in silver and gold divisions in three challenges against ghost data from seven other players. Also, side note, I love that it's ghost data and not actual online play. That means you can start your matches right away and there's no lag. Anyway, these are elimination challenges. In the first round, you need to place in the top four, then in the second round, you need to place in the top two, and of course, in the third and final round, you want to win. And this can be super frustrating, as having to place first or second in round two can be brutal. Especially since, while each week the set of challenges for the survival mode are the same, the actual order that you play them in is random each time. So it can be super frustrating if you're bad at one of the challenges but pretty good at the other two, and then having the bad one in the middle, where you have to get first or second place. I'd rather know that the one that I'm bad at is at the start so that I have the most chances to be able to move on, you know, instead of you know, having to get in the top four instead of the top two. Ignoring that kind of annoying aspect, this is generally a pretty fun game mode. The matches are pretty quick and it can feel really good to actually win. The final game mode is the World Championships mode. Now here you play the same set of challenges as in Survival mode which are updated each week. However, rather than being in Elimination mode, this is more of a time trial mode where you want to try and get the fastest time you can. Now you can try as many times as you want and only your fastest time is uploaded to the leaderboards. I actually really like how they designed the ranking system for this. At the end of the week, the rankings are published and you can see how good you did against everyone else in the world who competed. As you can see, I'm not very good. However, Nintendo added a separate set of rankings based on your birth year. So for example, I was born in 1998, so I can see how I compared to everyone else who was born in 98. And that was a really nice touch in my opinion. That way younger players who probably haven't played most of these games before have a chance to actually rank highly and aren't going to be stuck behind people who grew up playing these games and know them very well. Also, there is actually a multiplayer couch co-op mode where you can play with up to eight people, but I haven't played that so I can't actually tell you anything about it. I assume it operates probably pretty similar to the survival mode. So yeah, that's really all there is gameplay wise and yeah, it's not a lot, but considering this is a speedrun compilation of NES games, 
I don't think it needs a whole lot more than this. And it really is really well done. That's not actually all there is in the game. There are actually two different sets of collectibles you can get in the game. The first are virtual pins. You collect these by doing certain things in the game, like getting an A rank on a challenge or completing a certain number of challenges. And I love that these match the designs of the physical pins that were released with the Deluxe Edition. And what's better is that you can actually set a pin as your favorite and it'll be displayed next to your name so you can show off your pins to people who you compete against online. The other set of collectibles are the profile icons. These are purchased with coins and there's a huge variety to pick from. Now, personally, I'm just going to stick with this Link one, but I love that there are so many options to choose from and it gives another purpose to your coins after you unlock all of the challenges. So that's really all there is to the Nintendo World Championships NES Edition. It's a simple game and it's very fun. Now, if the in-game menus and the user interface had a little bit more personality to them, this could really be something great. But as it is, it's still really good. I do have to say that this game is not for everyone. If you're not into speedrunning, you're probably not going to enjoy this game. If you're someone who, in general, likes to just sit back, relax, play a game, you're, this might not be for you. If you're into speedrunning, you absolutely need to pick this up. But if not, you might want to skip it. I mean, you may still want to try it, in which case I'd recommend you get the eShop edition since it's half the price of this. But chances are, if you don't already enjoy speedrunning, you're probably not going to enjoy this. All right, now, speculation time. I am sure I'm not the first person who's noticed this, but this is specifically called the Nintendo World Championships NES Edition, which makes me think that they're planning on releasing other editions, probably Super Nintendo, maybe N64. Uh, I doubt they'd go past that because you know, with GameCube games, it gets a lot, you know, a lot higher file size. Uh, but I think there's actually a pretty good chance that as late releases for the Switch, maybe as kind of filler games while we wait for the next generation console to come out, Nintendo might actually release a Nintendo World Championships SNES edition or a Nintendo World Championships N64 edition. And that would be really awesome, I think. But even if this is the last of this series on the Switch, I think it's a really good game and I, I really enjoy it. It's great. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. If Nintendo does release a World Championships game for other consoles, what games would you like to see on it? Personally, I would love to speedrun A Link to the Past. I think that'd be fun, and I'm probably going to start doing that anyway, even if they don't release it on Switch. Please let me know your opinions down in the comments. Well, until next time, so long.